Um, okay. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Zhu Chen. I'm a PhD candidate in computer science at the UC Riverside. It's my pleasure to present our work, Jigsaw, uh, Efficient and Scalable Past Constraint Fuzzing. This is a joint work with my colleague Jin Han and my advisors, Chong Yusong and uh, Han Yin. So this work concerns courage guided testing. So in courage guided testing, we keep sending inputs to target program with the hope of flipping some branches. Whenever a branch is flipped, a new execution path will be unlocked. Clearly, if we can flip branches faster, then we can explore more code passes in the same amount of time. So how can we you know, flip branches faster? So there are two factors determining the branch flipping rate. The first factor is accuracy. It means how many inputs are expected to try before uh, finding a, a satisfiable one. And the second factor is the throughput. It means how many inputs we can try per second. And uh, the focus of Jigsaw is about the throughput. So next, let me review the current existing fuzzing or testing approaches and their accuracies. So if we have this spectrum of accuracy, we first have um, black box fuzzing, where inputs are mutated randomly and uh, to, towards flipping a branch. And because inputs, because we have no knowledge about the target, target program, then usually we need to try a lot of inputs for flipping a branch. So its accuracy is not good. So in the middle of this spectrum, we have gray box fuzzing. Uh, we have tools like AFL++, which do courage guided testing. Uh, and we have gradient guided uh, tools like Angra. Um, because we have uh, uh, guided guidance, then we try less inputs uh, before finding a satisfiable one. So that accuracy is better than bo black box fuzzing. So in the end of this stream, we have white box fuzzing, and we have uh, meaning uh, AKA symbolic or concurrent ex execution. And these tools connect constraints and send to SM SMT solvers. If we treat SMT solvers as black boxes, they can magically give you some inputs that uh, satisfy the uh, in, uh, constraints. So the accuracy is pretty high. Uh, but if we unlock, uh, sorry, if we unbox the SMT solvers, like Z3, bit Ozla, STP, X2, uh, they're actually running searching algorithms. Uh, specifically, modern SMD source are uh, running local search algorithms, um, and if no, if we cannot find a satisfiable input, they will do uh, bit of blasting and convert the uh, problem to a sad problem, and the sad and the sad source is running some backtracking searching algorithm to finding a uh, satisfiable input. So if we look from the perspective of, of throughput, uh, we have AFL plus Angra. In the one end of this spectrum, uh, they are doing searches on the whole original program. Because their searching target is its entire program, so its throughput is not high. And because we can connect constraints and send to SM, SMT solvers, uh, we have uh, SMT solvers in the middle of this spectrum. Because uh, for this solvers, their searching targets are past constraints, which are way much smaller than the original program, so their uh, searching throughput is better. Now, the question is, can we do better? And the answer is yes. So with Jigsaw, our approach is to first convert or compile the past constraints to latent functions, and we perform searches on the compiled latent functions uh, so that we can improve the searching throughput. Uh, also, because uh, to avoid uh, the constraint connector from being the uh, bottleneck of the whole system, we also optimize the constraint connector and uh, implement our own tool called Kerenenko. Now, here's one simple example of what I mean by native function. So, consider a very simple constraint x equal to 5, then our target native function will just be x minus 5. And our searching algorithm basically keep mutating x and uh, optimizing the distance between x and 5 until uh, we reach zero distance. If a zero distance is reached, we solve the constraints. Um, so you may wonder why latent functions are ideal searching targets. So we have a couple of reasons. First, they are much smaller than original program. 
And the second reason, we pass arguments to these native functions through memory and the register, so, are, so they are running, uh, they are much more faster than doing this uh, using disk files. And the third reason is that our native functions are branchless, so we don't need to worry about branch prediction, and we can easily exploit instruction-level parallelism, for example, using vectorized instructions. And the last but not least reason is that our native functions are pure, meaning that they do not touch any external state. Because functions are pure, we do not need to do cleanup among restarts, and we do not need to worry about data dependencies between functions. And also because uh, there are no de data dependencies, we can you know, scale Jigsaw to multi cores pretty uh, straightforward, and we can achieve linear scalability. Um, now we have very nice features of compiled and native functions, uh, compiled past constraints or native functions. We still need other uh, optimization to obtain sustainable high throughput. Uh, first of all, because just-in-time combination is very slow, it may cancel the benefits of this high throughput. So we use code cache to avoid redundant combination of the uh, past constraints. So according to a subset of our connected past constraints, uh, you, if we will use a code cache, then we have 17% uh, code cache rates. Uh, but that's not enough. So another observation is that uh, we observe that many constraints operating on different data are actually doing the same check. For example, x equal to 8 versus y equal to 16. So clearly we can reuse the same uh, functions for these two constraints. So after this optimization, we, our cache hits rate uh, in the data set of, um, we collected has almost 100%, and we improved the uh, searching throughput a lot. So, um, so let's talk about the results. First of all, uh, the first result I want to show is about the branch flipping rate. So we connect about 10 million listed past constraints from 14 real-world programs and ask each solver to solve them. And the results show that Jigsaw can solve you know, branches much faster than existing tools. Uh, our comparison target includes these three, the most popular and widely used uh, SM SMT solvers. And we have Peter Uzula, which is the winner in the SMT competition 2020 and 2021. And we have STP and the X2 in our comparison targets. Um, now, the reason for this achieve this goal, uh, result is that Jigsaw has a really high searching throughput. So our first comparison target is Angular. This comparison is very interesting because we are using the same gradient descent uh, guided uh, searching algorithm. And because Angular doing, you know, uh, are performing searches on the native, on the original whole program, uh, its throughput is not good. Um, the second target I want to mention is build Ursula. So uh, to enable uh, Apple to Apple comparison, uh, we configure build Ursula in its no code search mode, meaning that build Ursula will keep trying different inputs using no code search algorithms without build blasting. And we measure its uh, throughput, meaning how many inputs can be tried per second. And it turns out that Jigsaw also outperform the Ozala in this uh, perspective. So uh, after we obtain a much faster constraint solver, if we plug this to the Concolic Executor, we can improve the performance of Concolic Executor. And in this experiment, we paired Jigsaw with our own improved past constraint connector, Kernenko. And we compare with the CMCC, the, uh, the recently published very efficient uh, concurrent executor. And also, for the comparison purpose, we plug uh, Z3 to our improved Kerenenko, uh, uh, our to a Kerenenko. And uh, we measured the overall execution, uh, symbolic concurrent ex execution time for multi programs and um, with multiple Cs. And uh, the results show that uh, the concurrent executor with Jigsaw as a solver can finish executing much faster than existing tools. 
So with a very fast constraint connector, if we, uh, we also want to check if it is useful in the end-to-end -end fuzz testing. So we followed a very popular fuzzing scheme called hybrid fuzzing. We paired a jigsaw-powered concurrent executor with AFL, uh, AFL++ by exchanging seeds in a seed pool. And we entered our two hybrid fuzzer to Google's FuzzBench uh, benchmark. And it turns out that we performs pretty well in this fuzzing benchmark. Um, so next I want to talk about limitations. So uh, because uh, Jigsaw is currently using the local search algorithm to be more specific, uh, we're using the same uh, gradient descent uh, guided searching algorithm as Angora. Um, those uh, local search algorithm has limitations. So to be more specific, uh, its solving capability is not compared to Z3. So currently we can only solve 94% of constraints compared to Z3. In a comparison, we also check uh, Bid Ozla, which is the winner, again, uh, with its local search algorithm enabled, and it can solve 97%. So I think this result is quite surprising to me, at least that even though with this quite you know, simple gradient descent algorithm, uh, most of constraints can be solved. Uh, another limitation is uh, also because of uh, the local search algorithm, we cannot identify unset uh, queries, meaning that we can only keep searching until we reach uh, timeout. Uh, I want to emphasize that this limitations um, is because the algorithm we use is orthogonal to a jigsaw and it can be fixed by pairing jigsaw with more advanced algorithms. Uh, so finally, the takeaways. So first of all, what is a jigsaw? Jigsaw is basically an efficient and scalable pass constraint solver. Um, it improves concurrent execution. Um, so the way Jigsaw doing this is using in-memory just-in-time combination of the past constraints and doing gradient descent searching on compiled native functions. And our tool is open source and uh, you're most welcome to try the tool and uh, reach us if you have any question. Uh, with that being said, I'd like to conclude today's talk and uh, I'm happy to take any question. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Drew. Very interesting work. So uh, any questions that you'd like to ask? OK, I will start with a question. So um, I just wonder, how do you think about Jigsaw versus Z3? Because like Z3 is a known constraint solver. So comparing to Z3, what is the pro and cons of Jigsaw? What is the pro and count? Like advantage and the disadvantage of Jigsaw. Is that right? That's Jigsaw um, reaches better efficiency, but probably sacrifice the, say, like general uh, generosity, or uh, what do you yes, think about that? Yes, yes. Uh, Jigsaw can do in, uh, can flip solving branches much faster, more efficient, and scalable. Uh, the downside is that because of our current prototype using gradient descent uh, algorithm, which is pretty naive and simple algorithm, we kind of have limited the solving capability, meaning, meaning that it cannot solve every constraint that's solved by Z3. Yeah. I see, interesting. And do you think that Jigsaw will be something that is more of a fuzzing um, unique or fuzzing specific constraint solver, or there is also other possible applications that Jigsaw can apply to, given this kind of property of Jigsaw? Uh, currently, we only try to let, it, let Jigsaw to solve past constraints, so we only try its you know, utility in, in, uh, in the fuzzing, so, yeah. Okay, yeah, sounds great, thank you. Thank you. Oh, we have one more question over there. Uh, hi, uh, this was a great presentation, great job. One question I had was, my understanding of Angora is it does not handle nested constraints, joint constraint optimization, in which they produce a follow-up work called Matryoshka. Yeah, 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 yes. Does yours build upon this joint constraint optimization, or when you say branch flip, uh, I guess when you say path constraint, are you solving the whole constraint or just yeah, one Yeah, uh, I'm solving the listed, listed constraints in uh, Jigsaw. Mm, we're, we're using um, the joint optimization currently uh, mentioned in that Metro Ashikawa paper uh, to solve list, listed constraints. Uh, 
So you're solving joint constraints. Yes, and yes. With so this just strategy, just you're also getting 94%. Yes. Excellent. Yes. Cool. Thank you. Thank thanks. Um, so I have a question about um, Jigsaw not being able to say when a uh, formula is not satisfiable. Uh, I can only say that it is. Right. Um, so when you plug Jigsaw into the concurrent execution framework, how do you deal with the fact that for formulas that are not satisfiable, it will keep going forever, I presume? Do you just put a timeout? Yeah, I'm doing a timeout. So uh, we're using similar timeouts as Angra does. Uh, so uh, current in our evaluation, we tried different configurations. So we tried, uh, first of all, we tried the one million t uh, iterations as a timeout to evaluate the uh, solving capability. And to evaluate uh, efficiency, we tried 1,000 iterations as, as the timeout, because that's uh, the, uh, the similar timeouts used by Angular. And also, uh, we, uh, and also we checked that most constraints can be solved in 1,000 iterations. Thank you. Hi, a really interesting work. Um, I have a question actually not directly related to Jigsaw. So yeah. just, just, one, just wondering, uh, could you share like a concrete example, one Angora gradient design failed to solve the constraint? You mean the uh, example of fail, fail to solve the constraint? You, you mentioned uh, one of the Jigsaw's limitation is because Angora's naive uh, gradient design algorithm. Yes. I'm wondering, could you like share just one concrete example for, uh, for what, kind, uh, what for kind of SMT constraint, like SM Angora's gradient descent failed to solve? Oh, yes. Uh, so um, first of all, uh, gradient descent cannot handle bitwise uh, operation pretty well. So you can imagine that with bitwise, for example, uh, XOR, we do not have gradient, right? So for those kind of operations, we cannot handle it well very well. And also for uh, uh, for constraint that involves uh, division uh, instructions, we will have some limitations. Um, and another example is that when the, so the, uh, so gradient descent algorithm works well on the uh, convex uh, constraints. If so, if it is not convex, then so cannot handle it very well. Yeah. Thank you. Hi, great work. Uh, so I have a straightforward question. Uh, why it is so efficient, uh, you know, for its concurrent executor uh, compared with the same CC or CLI? Uh, why is the I, I forgot the name of your con concurrent executor? Oh, Kerenko. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's the what's the key difference there? Uh, compared to same CC? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we observed there are some there are some bottlenecks in same CC. For example, when they mu uh you know, maintaining the symbolic ex expressions. They do a lot of dynamic memory allocations. Uh, they're using, you know, a uh, smart pointer to manage the expressions. And uh, also their share, uh, shadow memory is not uh, implemented very uh, efficiently. So we optimize those, kind of mitigate those bottlenecks and uh, have our own, own tool. OK, yeah. OK, thank you. Thank yes, you. Thanks. All right, thanks to the speaker for the interest of time. We no longer take questions, and let's just move on to the next one.